Hiya Bernard, lovely to meet up with you again and do some further work on your game. Uh, things are improving nicely, we've still got to do a little bit of work on tightening the radius of the swing and keeping the mass forward through the hit. Uh, as per this most recent session, uh, related largely to just getting more compression on the golf ball, and obviously towards the end of your session you've written some really, really nice shots. Um, in regards to driver and chipping, the key for you is the hand path. Uh, the hands work upwards and outwards too fast from P1 to P2. Uh, this results in a sort of swipe in a cross action with your wedges. You don't have the time to compensate and usually the neck of the club is presented to the golf ball. With your driver it manifested itself as a little sort of pull fade. Uh, moving forward we've got the hands working in more. We use the box to sort of control the direction the hands and the club were working from P1 to P4 as the hand path moved inwards as per the images I emailed across to you yesterday. Uh, the ball flight improved dramatically, the overall distance improved, club head speed was up, etc, etc. So it's a, a sort of must to get the hands working in at both ends of your golf bag really. I mean it's it relates more to curvature than it did to quality of strike, uh, although you did get fewer heel strikes with the driver so you know hand path is, is essential that you work on that between now and when we get together next uh, when you're back from the States. So in regards to the compression the issue we had at the start of the session was the upper center was sort of hanging back a little bit behind the golf ball. The release point was too far back and this was resulting in very poor low point control and we used the left knee as our gauge and what we said was that at P6 we want to try and get the left knee out in front of the left ankle. We used gramp weight as our model and what we talked about was that the move from the top of the backswing, the first move was to move the left knee out in front of the, of the left ankle, a couple of inches. From 5 to 6 it moves a further couple of inches and you can see when you do that, that the left arm is very advanced. The upper centre has stayed forward. The lower centre has pushed further forward, as can be seen by the position of the left knee. And the radius of the swing is very, very tight. The release point there is directly over the top of the golf ball. We talked about using the ground properly. Now you can see there that Grant's gone into the ground before pushing up out of the ground during the hit. So that's the act of extension uh, in an attempt to shallow out the, the angle of attack to allow the body to continue to turn and to allow the arms to trace the circle on both sides of the golf ball. But that extension is of no use to us if we don't go into the ground initially. So what we saw at the start of your session was from the top of the backswing, the left knee had moved in a little bit too much, but more importantly, it didn't get back across. The left knee never moved outside the left ankle. The arms got pulled out too fast. The wrists were uncocked too quickly. And this results in a very, very wide radius. Now as we come through, the left heel would come off the floor. The elbows would divide. The head would lift a little bit, all in an attempt to stop the club crashing into the ground. Just going to get rid of those lines now and leave that impact position there. So we talked about a number of things. This was a great drill for you to emphasize the idea of getting into the ground. Now, the instruction you were given here was to just drive the club into the ground as hard as you could. You can see when you do that, there's no movement off the ball. You stay much more stacked on top of it. The first move now is fantastic. You start to get that left knee moving out towards the left ankle much, much better. The radius of the swing is really, really tight. You can see now that this left arm at P6 is much more advanced, that's accumulator 4. Radius of the swing is tighter. From there you're going to have much more handle lean coming into the golf ball and obviously much more compression. So quite an extreme example of trying to sort of push into the ground but you can see when you do that you've much more flex in the lead knee and much more on top of the golf ball as opposed to the sort of polar opposite of that on the left hand side where the lead legs pushing up too fast the arms are dividing, the weight staying back, etc. The other thing we talked about was the idea of sort of working accumulator for faster. So the goal here is to get 
the butt of the club in line with a belt buckle by the time the shaft is parallel with the ground. So we're trying to get the butt of the club in line with the belt buckle by the time the shaft's parallel with the ground. In order to do that, you've got to speed up accumulator four, left arm. You've got to maintain the wrist angle. You know that one? You have to maintain the wrist angle for longer. Remember the three different P6s that I demonstrated to you? P6 is a checkpoint, it's when the shaft's parallel with the ground. So it can happen in many different ways. But here we see it happening in a nice way where the hips are sliding forward. The left knee is getting out in front of the left ankle. The radius is very tight, etc, etc. And there's much more of our model swing in both of those drills. You know, we use the, uh, I didn't email the image, but I will do today at some point. We, we sent the, or we used the canes out in front of the bay. And the image was to drive the ball under the cane. And when you did that, you had a much better flex in the lead knee. But those drills are producing much more of what we need. So this swing here on the top left needs a lot of this, a lot of this, and a lot of this. So you can see the, the sort of similarities between these two and the model. And here there's not really a lot of similarity at all. If we look at the swing towards the sort of midpoint of the session, or maybe three quarters of the way through, we're starting to see a little bit less movement in of the left knee. We're starting to see the left knee get out over the left ankle a little bit more. The left arm has started to speed up. The gap between the butt of the club and the right thigh has started to diminish as has the gap between the right arm and your side. So it's all about tightening the radius, using the ground in a better manner, in, you know, increasing a little bit of linear movement and just working on those drills. Spend a little bit of time just trying to feel like you're driving the ball forward under a branch, set up the canes like we had in the studio. Um, a little bit of time working on the drill we see on the top right where you're trying to get the shaft parallel to the ground and the butt of the club in line with the belt buckle. And spend a little bit of time working on this drill where we just find a rubbish bit of ground somewhere and we just drive the club into the ground as hard as we can. Now we know we don't want to have that happen in the golf swing, but we want that drive down up to P6. Then we can start to bring the club out of its descent. But it's no use bringing the club out of its descent if it's not starting to descend in the first place. We're just going to extend. Then we're going to have to dump the wrist to widen the radius, etc., etc. And that's going to lead to zero compression. Good luck with it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me uh, via email or telephone. I uh, hope you enjoyed your session. You seem like you had a great day. And I really look forward to working with you again in the coming months. Well done.